Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're doing another seasonal spring flower painting project and we're going to paint hyacinths. So grab your paints and let's get started. Today we're going to paint our hyacinths a little differently to our sort of usual botanical painting style. We're going to do these in nice miniature, uh, almost like bullet journal illustrations, which is quite fun. So I'm going to start off by getting my nice sort of spring bulb green mix. So I'm going to use my lemon yellow, which so often has a load of green in it anyway, because that always seems to be what I use it for. So getting a lovely zesty colour. And I'm going to paint three hyacinths. Um, and they're going to be in pots, which is going to be kind of cool. And so my first one is going to be in permanent rows. So I'm just waking up the permanent rows and I am going to be building up layers. And I need to begin with a really, really dilute layer. So the way in which we can get that ready is to sort of take a little bit out of your well, place it into the open palette and, and get it as watery as you need it. And that looks great. So let's let's begin. I've got a size four brush to begin with. And the first thing I need to do is a little bit of pencil work. Um, I'll start from the side here. I'm going to draw, so I've got a little baseline imagining my pot stem, and I am going to draw a sort of I don't know, it's like the head of a microphone, <laughs> slightly elongated just a basic shape for where my flowers are going to protrude from just to give them a yeah a vague sense of shape and I'm going to paint in a sort of lollipop up the middle of that and I'm going to start it about here and that's all it really needs really so I'll just smooth it out a tiny bit and that is going to be my main stem. Now I'm going to get one of my smallest brushes, uh, two tenths, make sure it's nice and clean. I was doing a little practice. There we go, <laughs> it's got loads of green on it. I was doing a little practice earlier, so I forgot to clean my brushes off. So let that be a lesson to us all. Always have your kitchen roll ready. And now I can begin. So I'm gonna pick up this really, really dilute color and I'm going to begin by at the top, starting with some very delicate little budding flowers that are coming out of the top of this hyacinth. And if any of you haven't yet watched my um, little sort of product test on pencils, I highly recommend you go and do that. But this is a good example of when we really want to make sure that our pencil rubs out easily because we're doing very delicate work over the top of it. So what I'm doing is I'm just fanning out from the central stem, allowing the wetness to blend into the stem a little. It's not going to do too much. And I am doing these little simple petal flowers that aren't sort of hugely fully open yet so we go with the fine tip and then spread out sort of fan out into a few petals as we go further down my flowers are a little bit more open but what we're doing is we're basically building up a base layer for the hyacinth petals that we're going to paint in more detail on top once this first layer has dried. Having this rough pencil shape around is a fantastic help for keeping a consistent shape. And what's really nice, it's one of those lovely things where watercolour is doing more work than you are, is the way that the colour pink is blending into that stem is something rather accurate in terms of the way in which the colour of the pink is really going to start to take over. I'm just doing a few little extra strokes just to sort of build up a little bit of interest and then towards the bottom I'm going to have a few not quite so open 
flowers there. Okay. So we want to let that dry fully. Um, so I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to paint in two more of these flowers and then we'll come back and sit, get on with the next layer. Here we've now got three hyacinths in the same stage. So this one's permanent rose, this one's cobalt blue, and this one is a mixture, here it is, of French ultramarine and alizarin crimson, but really, really uh, dilute. So you get this lovely dusky purple color. So let's get back to the permanent rose. So this time we're on the next layer and we want a slightly more concentrated color. So I'm going to mix some more color but pop it into that wet puddle we had in the first place because we're going to do three layers in total of these little flowers and so we don't want to get too overexcited and go all in for this next one. It needs to be somewhere in between. So this time I'm going to be painting flowers that come a little bit more uh, open and a little bit sort of back from the edge of the first layer and we're still going to go sort of down either side and a, a hyacinth petal I mean they're the most incredible unfurling ribbons of flowers um, but we are doing a simplified version here so the main thing to focus on is you have a spindly little stem and then a sort of starburst curl of those flowers and you've got to be ready for the fact that your little flowers are going to overlap with each other on this little exercise but that's okay because we are painting these miniature cute little versions that are giving us the essence of the piece and that's why we're building up the three layers And when we get to the third most concentrated layer, that's when we can actually do some slightly more detailed versions. But it's very important that we don't go too strong with the second layer and lose the ability to add a third layer. So you can see all these flowers are just a little bit in from the outer edge of the previous layer, but they are not filling too much of the centre either. Okay, that's lovely. So the cobalt blue, getting a little bit more colour in there. And we're just doing the same. So I'm just going to carry on and I'll meet you for the third layer. Another layer all done and nice and dry, ready for the final of the petals. So this time we're gonna go nice and strong. And here's my permanent rose. And this time, just make sure I haven't got a blob of water on my brush, we can be a little bit more detailed. So, there we go, so you can see the flowers can be straight on, front on this time, or coming out from the side. But essentially, the little, the little sort of stars with petals that curl out from the centre. That's what you're aiming for. And these ones are going to sit right over the front of the stem and you'll see a little bit of them sort of around the side as well but in doing this technique and a few little extra little dabs here and there it it builds up not only a nice sense of lots of flowers on the hyacinth whilst all being able to sort of see, be fairly well defined from each other but it also gives you a feeling of roundness 
that you've got these bold, brighter flowers in the middle and fading off around the edges are those other fainter tones but all with plenty of texture. I was excited that hyacinth bulbs are starting to bloom, they're starting to come out in our garden because um, it presents me with new challenges each week of how best can I paint the flower to sort of give you a slightly fun take on a new way of, of sort of thinking about painting a different scale. That's the beauty of watercolour is we can try all sorts of things because with watercolour you can be really quite detailed as well as looser and broader with a bigger brush. So yeah, it's fun to change up the scale every now and then. And then as we get towards the bottom, these sort of bell-like shapes protruding from down there. So I'll let that dry, we'll paint our next one, and then we'll come back and see if there's anything more we want to add. But on the whole, we'll just keep going. So little stars, and just make sure my brush is clean because there's still quite a bit of pink on there. So it's amazing how much paint, look at that, how much paint remains on your brush. So that's why a piece of kitchen roll is so important. Because you can blot it out and really see what's going on. So it's those little bits of unpainted space in the middle that make a big difference. And I'm, I'm sticking with this because I thought it would be really interesting for us to have a look at how easy it is to create a more concentrated version of a mixed up colour because it's all very well having colours that you've got ready and waiting in your palette in nice concentrated form. But actually, this purple one on the end here presents a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, and we're ready for it. So clean that brush off. Now I'll get my larger brush. Instead of adding to this, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make a brand new little separate mix with a more concentrated bit of both of the colors. So clean that brush right off into the Alizar in Crimson. And the risk is when you've got two very sort of strong colours that they can make a very dark, moody one. But at least what we've got here is a concentrated section. So I can now take from that just a little bit on my brush. There we go, lovely. Just use it sparingly. Okay, so we'll get this one painted up and then we'll have a look at where we are. I think it's time to change our water because we're now going to look at 
the extra leaves coming out from the bulbs. So what I'm going to do with my pencil is I'm just going to mark where the pot is going to start. So I'm just going to do a little line. Just so I know. And now let's revisit this green we've got here. And also get that fluff off my brush. So let's mix up a little bit more. Lovely. And I find that hyacinth leaves start off lovely fresh green and they just sort of get a little bit greener towards the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm just going to build up leaves. They've, they're sort of long and straight and then they have a sort of pointed top. And obviously we've got a very sort of distinct base to that stem there. But that's not a problem, we can sort that out. What we're going to do first though is just drop in, use my smaller brush I think. A little bit of extra green at the top. And if it's dried that's no problem, you can just blend it down with a clean wet brush. And then what we can do to start to sort of blend this in, we can with a clean wet brush just sort of smooth over that a little bit and then we're going to wait for all of that to dry and add just a little bit more detail. So let's do that again. Size 2 brush seems to work really nicely for these leaves. With that sap green you can sort of help shape it a little bit as well. I have a slightly wayward one. Don't forget that little bit of sap green. clean wet brush if you need to just smooth it down in a little bit and then clean wet brush just smooth that a little bit as well Okay, so we'll go back to this one. And now we can do just a little bit of detail work because it has dried. So I'm using sap green to create a sense of these leaves sort of unfurling from each other, which also handily encases that stem there. 
So it's all quite delicate work at this point, so just don't sort of rush in too far. If it's not quite dry yet, that's fine. Just give it a minute. Let's see, is this one dry? Not quite, so we'll just put in some gentle stuff, but we won't try and get too much of a defined shape there. So I'm just going to let these dry fully, and then we'll come back and put in the pots as well. So once you've painted in those lines, clean wet brush to just smooth them just a little bit. worth having a little think about which order you want your leaves to grow out. Lovely. And we could just put the tiniest bit of shadow just Even though they're small, it's always worth treating them like they're more detailed paintings. So taking the time to add just a tiny bit of shadow is always, always a good idea. Now for the little pots, I just want to keep it really simple and as we've got our shadow mix mixed up, just add a bit of French ultramarine in there. So I've got a really, really pale colour, a nice sort of grey, but I'm going to use it really, really sparingly and with my size 2 brush, going to brush a uh, stroke across the top there, clean my brush off, doing a little outline, and then just sort of filling in a little bit. And just creating a little sort of soft, simple pot shape and just leave a little bit of unpainted space. So let's do that one again. So across the top and then down the sides. I've got this little line just to help me so I know that all my pots can sort of sit roughly along the same level. And just by leaving a little bit of unpainted space, it gives a little shine on this simple little ceramic pot. But gosh, you could do all kinds of designs. If you want some inspiration and some guidance on how to paint some cool plant pots, I have some lovely miniature uh, vases of flowers and houseplant tutorials in my uh, illustration and flowers and foliage playlists. So go and check those out. 
but we'll see as we allow these to dry how they turn into these beautiful little textured pots. All rubbed out, time for some finishing touches. Let's get that shadow a little bit stronger. So shadow mix is always a brown and blue mix. Here it's burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. And I'm going to just create a little bit of shadow along the ground. A little up the side. And then if you want, what you can do on some of them is you can create a little bit of a, of a sort of background, but not all of them need it. In fact, I think I'll just do it on that one. So there you go. Three sweet little hyacinths in pots. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. It's fun sometimes to play with scale and do something a little simpler. I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you're getting on. And if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!